In this video, we're going to talk about how we can solve two-step linear equations. So previously you've learned how to solve one-step equations, and that stems behind the idea of undoing what's happening to x or the variable so that you can get the variable by itself and find its value that makes the equation true. Now when we have two-step equations, there are two operations. So here we can see that there's addition and multiplication. And the trickiest part is we need to figure out what we undo first. Now, the easiest way to think about this is we are going to undo the order of operations in reverse or backwards, because that's the best way to go about solving equations to get that variable by itself. Now, what I suggest you do is focus just on the side with the variable. So here I kind of outlined that in red. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to say, okay, the order of operations. What are the order of operations? I'm focusing on just this part that I've boxed in red. So there I have a multiplication and an addition. And I know with the order of operations that the multiplication of 5 would come first because I would multiply x by 5, and then I would add the 7 second. So that's my order of operations if I were to evaluate that equation, or that expression, excuse me, on the right-hand side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these operations in reverse, because when we're solving equations, we are undoing the order of operations backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by undoing this plus 7. And the way to undo a positive 7 is to either subtract 7 or add a negative 7 to each side of the equation. And as I do that, those zero out on the left-hand side, and I'm left with 5x equals 37 plus a negative 7 is 30. So I'm undoing the order of operations backwards. I then move up because this one's been taken care of, and the next thing I see that I need to undo is I need to undo a multiplication of 5. Well, the way of undoing a multiplication of 5 is to divide by 5. So if we divide both sides by 5, 5x divided by 5 leaves us with 1x. 30 divided by 5 leaves us with 6. So I'm left with this answer of x equals negative 6. Now, if you're one of my students that's a little skeptical, you can always check your answer by taking this value and plugging it back into that original equation. So we have 5 times x is 6 plus 7 equals 37. I would then apply my order of operations, so 30 plus 7, which gives me 37. So I can see that this, in fact, value of x equals 6 does make the equation true. And the best way to solve these is by undoing the order of operations backwards. So we made a list of the order of operations on the side with the variable we're trying to get alone, and then we undid them in reverse. All right, so here we have two more examples we're going to work through. Let's focus on this one here first. So remember, we're always undoing the order of operations backwards. So I'm going to start by making a list of the order of operations by simply focusing on this side that I want to get the variable alone on. So looking there, I can see operations of division and addition. And I know that out of those two operations that the division of 5 would come first, and then I would add 14 if I happen to know what x was. So what this helps me figure out is this helps me figure out the order in which I need to undo the operations because I need to undo the order of operations in reverse. So the first thing I need to undo is that addition of 14, which can be undone either by subtracting 14 or adding a negative 14 to each side. So I'm going to undo the order of operations in reverse. So here I then have x over 5 is equal to negative 19 plus a negative 14 is a negative 33. And then from here, I'm going to undo that division of 5. So I'm going to undo the division of 5 by multiplying both sides by 5. So those undo each other. 
and then I'm left with x is equal to a negative 165. And if I wasn't sure if that answer was correct, I could take that value for x, plug it back in, and ensure that it does in fact make the equation true. But remember, this whole process stems from the idea that we are undoing the order of operations backwards in order to get the variable value by itself. All right, so from here, if we look over here at example two, this one's a little more difficult for a variety of reasons. So first I'll notice that this fraction looks a little bit different. I know that if I have operations and fractions, that really there's imaginary parentheses around the top and imaginary parentheses around the bottom. I also know if I see a subtraction that I should change it into keep change change. So. Looking at this particular example, I need to think through, if I knew the value for x, what would my order of operations be on that left-hand side of the equation? And what I would do first is I would start inside of those parentheses in the numerator, and I would add the negative 2, or I would subtract 2. And once I had that numerator solved, I would then take that value in the numerator, and I would divide it by 2. So if I were to evaluate the left-hand side of that equation, those are the order of operation steps that I would take. And then from here, I'm going to undo those order of operations backwards. So I'm going to start by undoing the division by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. So that undoes the 2 there. We're then left with x plus negative 2 is equal to 24. We're then going to undo the addition of negative 2 by adding 2 to each side. So we have x is equal to 26. So again, remember, this stems from the idea that we are undoing the order of operations backwards in order to solve our equation for its missing variable value. So the last thing we're going to talk about is this tricky example that you see on the screen here. So this is where it's really important to start this whole process by rewriting everything with the keep change change. So here we're going to rewrite this with keep change change. And remember that if x doesn't have a number in front of it, there's really a negative 1. So in order to effectively and correctly solve this problem, we need to start by using keep change change. So really here we have 4 plus negative 1 times x is equal to 12. And then we can start the process of trying to undo the order of operations backwards. So we're going to focus on the order of operations here on the left-hand side of the equation. And if I were to focus on this left-hand side, I see an addition of 4 and a multiplication of negative 1. And in the order of operations, that multiplication of negative 1 would come first, and then I would add on a positive 4. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to undo the order of operations backwards now that we've figured out what the order of operations forward would be. So we're going to start by undoing that addition of 4, which would either be done by subtracting 4 on each side or adding a negative 4 on each side. And as we do that, this side zeroes out. So we have negative 1x is equal to 8. We're then going to undo that multiplication of negative 1 by dividing both sides by negative 1. So we have x is equal to negative 8. So this is just to stress the importance of noting this is really a multiplication of negative 1 with that subtraction of x. So utilize keep change change and add your negative 1's in there so that you don't make an error.